Hello, Van Kraken here, World of Warships Legends Alpha Tester. We are back with part two of our easy aiming guide on target lead and elevation to help anyone who's new or just wants to improve at a core skill in Legends, which is main battery aiming. Did you know that there is shell ballistics data in your head up display crosshair hidden in plain sight that can greatly improve your ability to lead targets? Stay tuned to see how you can use this aiming secret to immediately improve your shots with a simple game breaking technique that is not taught in the manual. Nope, just kidding, there is no manual, but if you are a new or casual player, you might be thinking that learning to aim and lead targets in World of Warships is more of an art form than a science. And certainly, with simply enough practice and training, you will improve your hit rate over time just through repetition, even when you wing it most of the time like an artist painting with a broad brush. However, there is an awesome source of data hidden inside the targeting crosshair that can take average players to a much higher level of success with their main battery guns by using a defined technique and not just their gut. To learn how to use the crosshair with confidence, it's going to get just a little bit technical in here. So let's quickly break down its component parts so we know our way around. The reticle in the center of our crosshair is our aiming point for firing our main battery guns. And below it is a dynamic reload timer that tracks when they are loaded and ready to fire. The horizontal aiming line is our means of lining up our targets with our reticle and is divided into equal size segments that help with leading moving targets that we'll call tick marks. The aiming distance to the right of the reload timer tells us the range to the aiming point targeted in our reticle and provides data about how that matches up with the actual distance to an enemy ship which is listed by the ship's own icon. And finally, the shell flight timer, which is possible to miss, lists how long it takes shells from your main battery guns to hit the point that your reticle is currently aiming at. So great, we have all of these cool tools to spice up the HUD, but what does it all really mean beyond providing some fancy window dressing? To answer that question, let's apply the crosshair elements we just reviewed to a quick aiming sequence that dramatically improves main battery hit rate making leading targets predictable and data-driven versus just shooting from the hip. Step one is to lock the target by either placing the reticle over it or selecting it with the RBR1 button on your controller to highlight it with the gun sight over the ship's icon. Step two is to zoom into your target with binocular mode using L2, LT on your controller. I always stay in one times magnification and don't zoom in further by clicking the right stick as having a broader field of view is almost always better than being too tunneled in, especially for fast-moving targets like destroyers that need a bigger lead. An interesting sidebar to highlight here is that while there is no true auto-aim in Legends, you will get a kind of aim assist when you zoom into your target that typically puts your reticle in front of your target's general path of travel. However, while this suggestion is a good starting point, if you read the direction and speed of your target with your own eyeballs and make fine adjustments, you can dramatically increase your hit rate over just zooming and firing blind. We actually covered reading target speed and direction in our easy aiming guide part one, so check that out when you have a chance if you want more background detail. Now back to our aiming sequence, this leads us into key step number three which is using real data provided by the crosshair to dial in the position of our reticle with the right stick before firing, giving us more precision. We'll show you how to do this in just a second. Then finally, only with our target locked and our aim honed in, we'll pull the R2 RT trigger to fire our main guns in step four and land more shells. The data from the Crosshair shell flight timer automatically adjusts for guns of different calibers, handling, and shell arcs, so it's a true game changer and key concept when it comes to accurately leading a large percentage of the broadside targets you will encounter in Legends. In the simplest terms, we are going to fire our guns after putting a specific number of tick marks between the centrally located reticle and an aiming point on target ships traveling at full speed and at a roughly constant distance from our ship. Now let's show exactly how this works. For a ship traveling at 30 knots of speed, which is the average full speed for a lot of cruisers and some of the faster battleships in Legends, the relationship of the shell flight time to tick marks is virtually one to one, 
Therefore, the lead and tick marks from the reticle to a middle position on the broadside enemy ship traveling at full speed will be equal to the number of seconds on the shell flight timer. In this particular example, we are in Helena looking at a target Zara's midship section which is 5.8 seconds of flight time away. With the enemy ship at a range of 8.5 kilometers and moving at a flank speed of 31 knots. So we put six tick marks, the same value as the shell flight timer, between the reticle and target along the aiming line for consistent shell strikes. Average speed battleship targets like Nagato or other ships with a flank speed of around 23 to 25 knots will need to be led about one quarter less, or about 0.75 tick marks per second which is equal to 4.5 tick marks from the reticle to target along the aiming line in this case. And finally, destroyers with a higher average flank speed of 37 knots will need a longer lead than a battleship or a cruiser, about 1.25 tick marks per second on the shell flight timer. So in this example we need to lead a Shiratsuyu by about 7.5 tick marks to reliably strike our target. You will find that a large percentage of your targets in an average game are somewhere between 3 and 9 seconds of shelf flight time away from your ship's location. So knowing these rules of thumb will dramatically improve your rate of putting shells on target. But for some frustrating reason, the tick marks on the reticle fade out after 6 marks from the center on either side of the middle. You will have to visually estimate the positions of marks 7 through 9 for longer range targets with the relative position of number 9 being very close to the edge of the screen. Now when we fire at targets at a distance of more than 9 seconds away in shelf flight time, the aiming line scale naturally has to shift to a larger value. We've shown with our data and examples that our base ratio for a 30 knot speed target is about 1 tick mark per second when they are between 3 to 9 seconds of shell flight time away. For longer range targets with a shell flight time of over 9 seconds, we need to adjust our base lead for the same 30 knot speed target to about 1 tick mark per 1.5 to 2 seconds of flight time. I've found that a good rule of thumb is to use 2 seconds per tick mark for these distance ships and then make adjustments that make sense from practice and experience depending on the type and speed of the ship that you are firing at. While you'll still use the tick marks to help gauge your lead as with closer targets, you'll have to do lead calculations a bit more subjectively based on repetition and making appropriate adjustments between salvos to walk your fire into the enemy ship. Alright, now that we've covered how to lead targets that are traveling at a constant speed and distance from our ship, let's take a step further to see how we adjust our main battery elevation, or up and down aim to compensate for ships that are turning or moving toward or away from our own ship at relatively consistent speeds and angles. We'll need to subtract or lower our main gun elevation for targets that are heading or turning towards us, which means that the reticle will actually have to be placed lower than the bow of the enemy ship relative to the horizon when we fire our guns. To pick the right point to aim at, we first want to visualize a line of travel for the enemy ship that passes through it and projects forward on its current heading. Secondly, we'll have to apply the appropriate number of tick marks of lead using the aiming line at a bit of an angle, in this case about 4.5 ticks for the 4.5 second shell flight time to a 31 knot Zara. And third, we triangulate where to place the reticle, placing the center of it at the point where the physical aiming line and the visualized line of travel intercept below the current position of the target. You may not know it, but there are actually fancy modified crosshairs on the PC version of World of Warships that have these lines of travel drawn in for you at various angles. But on console, we'll have to see those lines in our imagination. We simply reverse this process and aim our reticle above enemy ships for targets that are turning or heading away. 
Again, we visualize a line of travel for the enemy ship that passes through it and projects forward on its current heading. Next, we apply the appropriate number of tick marks of lead using the aiming line. And finally, we triangulate where to place the reticle. There's one final bonus topic related to gun elevation that we want to cover. It's a common question about what part of the hull to aim at on targeted ships. A simple rule of thumb is to aim at the water line by placing the bottom of the target ship right on the aiming line where the hull meets the water when you are at relatively close ranges to your target, say within 5 to 10 kilometers. At these closer ranges, aiming water line will increase the chance that you citadel vital compartments like ammunition magazines under the turrets or boilers under the smokestacks that are typically placed at or slightly below the water for additional protection. When you are further away from your target than 10 to 12 kilometers, you can raise your chance of landing more shells on the enemy ship by slightly raising your aiming line to cut through a higher point on the side of the hull from a broadside point of view. The reason you want to make this elevation adjustment is the impact of RNG error, technically known as lateral dispersion and vertical sigma, that causes your shells to spread across a wider and taller area as you get further from your target. The interaction of this side to side and up and down error forms a shell pattern that resembles an ellipse, with shots concentrated at the center, but having the potential of hitting or missing anywhere in the shaded area we show here. And when you elevate your aim a bit higher, you just increase the overlap of the oval with the target so more of your rounds will actually hit home when they deviate both above and below your actual aiming point. And one other highly valid reason to raise your main gun elevation at any range to a higher point is to purposely target the superstructure of the enemy ship where the armor is thinner, such as above the armor belt on more hardened targets like battleships. This can increase the damage output of destroyers, cruisers, and battleships with smaller caliber guns significantly, especially those that have lower penetration values. Please note for the purposes of this video, we covered mainly firing solutions for targets moving at relatively consistent headings and speeds, and have not addressed aiming at ships that are drastically changing speed or direction, such as kiting cruisers or destroyers. But you can take these basic concepts about how to use the reticle and successfully apply them to aiming at ships displaying more extreme turning behaviors. All in all, understanding the science of the crosshair and how you can use it most effectively is a great first step to getting way better at hitting targets. But there is a balance of both data and art or feel in aiming. And you can definitely tilt the scales in your favor through lots and lots of gunnery training in live AI or standard games as there is no simple firing solution that is one size fits all for every situation. Now that we've unlocked a few key crosshair secrets for setting up shots and improving your aim, stay tuned for another video linked in the upper left corner of your screen for more content to help take your main battery gunnery to the next level. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or join us for a live stream here on YouTube or on Twitch. Here's to more devastating strikes and a higher hit rate that makes your time spent in Legends the most fun it can be. This is Van Kraken, I thank you for watching, and I am out.